Hi everyone, Kendall here, and this week we have our seventh installment of our Festivals and Fireworks Sew Along, hosted by Pat Sloan at her website, ilovetomakequilts.com. This week we just make the one alternate version, and for the rest coming ahead, there's only one alternate version to make as well, but in this video you will see me make both at the same time. So grab your pattern, grab your fabric, come with me, and I'll show you how I do it. This week we only have one alternate method of making this block and that is simply to replace the half square triangles for the outer parts with our flying geese and because we need four or eight flying geese in this instance because we are making two of these blocks so two lots of four we will be making those flying geese units four at a time who could have guessed that <laughs> We'll start by making the half square triangles that we need for the centre of this block and for that we need pieces B and D. We'll take pieces B and we will draw a diagonal line on the back side of both of those before matching them up right sides together with our D fabric and taking it to the machine and stitching a quarter of an inch on each side of our drawn line. With this stitching now done, we will take them and give them a quick press to set those seams and make sure that those threads sink into the fabric before slicing them in a half on our drawn line and then we will press towards the dark side. You can now trim down your half square triangles with your preferred method. Mine, as you may or may not be aware, is to do them two at a time. And to do this, I make sure that I have the seam there in the middle nice and snugly nested before taking my six and a half inch square ruler. I place the diagonal line from my ruler along the stitching line. I then make sure that I have enough fabric outside my required trim down measurement of three and a half inches before trimming the first two sides. I then rotate the piece very carefully and I place that trim down measurement on those two freshly cut sides and I measure the three and a half inches and I trim the last two sides. Now that we have our half square triangles made and trimmed to perfection, we're going to grab four of our A squares and put the rest back aside and we're going to construct the middle of this week's block. So to do that we're just going to be making a simple four patch and we'll lay it out as per the image in our pattern and then we'll sew this together by first doing our two vertical seams and then our horizontal seams. In both cases for the vertical seams we will press towards the solid square and then once we've done our horizontal seam we will spin that center intersection. To help with spinning this uh, middle intersection, we'll just pick out those few stitches that are on either side of our horizontal seam that we just made before giving the fabric a little bit of a twist and opening that up. We then make sure that all of our seam allowances are going in the same direction, so in this instance they will go counterclockwise. 
I also decided while doing this and because we're working on reducing bulk to clip into my seam allowance on either side of the spun center so that the points from our half square triangles will lay flat as well in the opposite direction to which this seam is going and you can clip into but not pass the stitching on the back of any of your blocks to control the bulk I do it all the time and I have never had a big, like, issue with doing so. We're now going to make our flying geese units and to do this we need our pieces C and E. So you should have two C squares and eight of the E squares here. We're first going to take all of our E squares and draw a diagonal line on the reverse side of these and then we will line those two of those up across the center of one of our larger blocks. When we line them up across our larger block we need to as best we can ensure that our drawn line goes completely across the large block in a straight line. We'll then take those to the machine and stitch a quarter of an inch on each side of the drawn line. that now done I just like to give these a quick press first to set the seams before cutting them in half along our drawn line and then pressing all of our peaks of the units up away from the large white rectangle uh, triangle sorry in this instance it will look like a love heart or a cat's face and you have heard me say that before We'll then take the remaining two squares, L or four that we have in this instance, because I am making two blocks, and place those once again across our large piece, pointing from the two peaks down to the bottom of that large triangle. We'll then take it back to the machine and once again stitch a quarter of an inch on each side of our drawn line. this stitching now done we will once again clip these apart and then give them a quick press to set those seams before slicing them in half along this drawn line and then pressing our little triangles out again away from that center white triangle we'll then be ready to trim these down We now need to trim down our flying geese because doing this method it does leave you with excess to trim so that you have perfect flying geese every single time. My preferred method as you may or may not be aware is to use the ultimate flying geese tool from Creative Grids. It gives you a little list on the left hand side there that I was pointing out 
and that gives you the sizes, but it also lets the sizes you need to cut, and it also lets you know which reference line on the tool you need to use to trim these down. We simply find that reference line and place it on our block inside that peak, making sure that all of our edges are nice and square. We then trim the first two sides. After this is done, we rotate both the block and the tool. We get that same reference line again on our edges and in our peak, and we cut the remaining two sides. If you do not own the Ultimate Flying Geese tool, you can do this with a regular quilting ruler. As is always my preference, I have my six and a half inch square here. Our unfinished size for these flying geese is three and a half by six and a half. So we need to line up that three and a quarter mark, which is half of our six and a half in the center of our peak, making sure that we have a quarter of an inch above that peak. And we can take a reference from the bottom of the block so that we know that it's straight as that is our original edge from the large square that we cut. We then trim away those first two sides. Rotate the block and place the ruler back on. And this time we can put our three and a half by six and a half around those outside edges and you will notice that my diagonal line or my 45 degree line in this instance on my square ruler there is going right across that leg of the flying geese and then we can trim our final two sides so trim all of your flying geese down and i'll meet you back for the next steps we have all the required pieces for our block it's time to lay it out as per our pattern and it will go together as a nine patch remembering I am making two at the same time this week as there is only the one alternate piecing method we'll go through and sew all of our vertical seams first pressing as we go and then we'll do our horizontal seams come to lining up this flying geese unit with our half square triangle in the center row we'll match up those points with that center seam that we have there and secure that with a pen pin you could use the hang pin technique here but i find just lining them up and making sure that they match and securing with one pin is fine The first of our vertical seams now sewn, we'll just give this a quick finger press before attaching that final row. On the top and the bottom, we are going to press out towards the solid square, and in the middle, much as we did last week, we're going to press that seam open. With all of our seams now done on the vertical, we will take this to the pressing mat and press all of those seams into place to make them stick. As I said, we will press that centre seam open, but you will see me here just give a quick clip on either side of the peak in the middle, and that's just so that I can flip the seam allowance on the ends, as you'll see me doing here now, to nest those seams on either side of the flying geese when we're attaching the top and the bottom row. I'm also taking care to match up that center seam with the peak of our flying geese, as I did when we were attaching the side units.
We'll treat the horizontal seams the same way we did on the vertical and we will clip into our seam allowance on either side of our peak in the middle. Press that part where the peak is open and on the other ones they will press out towards the solid square. Do this for both of these seams and our block for this week will be done. Thanks for joining me again this week folks. I hope it doesn't get a little bit boring going over the same technique in every video but once you have those basic techniques you can make just about any quilt block so your flying geese, your half square triangles, your economy blocks etc. What I do provide for you though throughout these videos even though we rehash those same techniques week after week is the pressing injection ugh, pressing instructions even to make sure that you get the flattest block possible. So Thanks, thanks a lot for joining me again this week and I hope to see you next week. Bye for now.